Naming herself the modern Alice in Wonderland, Yayoi Kusama is an artist of many dimensions. Applicable to our studies in an amplitude of ways, Kusama utilizes art as therapy, advocates through the platform, and features themes of psychological distress, feminism, and sexuality throughout her works. A true creator of paintings, film, poetry, sculptures, photography, and installation, Kusama reigns as one of today's most influential females within the contemporary art scene. Yayoi Kusama, however, is more than just an artist. She is a survivor of both abuse and mental illness, as a very trying childhood prefaced Kusama's fame. Born in 1929, Yayoi Kusama entered a broken family, becoming the daughter of an abusive mother and an adulterous father. In fact, Kusama's mother would send her to spy on her father's extramarital affairs, making her an eyewitness to the toxicity of her parents' loveless marriage. Later in life, this would lead to an instilled confusion about sexuality. As Kusama quoted, the sexual obsession and fear of sex sit side by side in me. Kusama began to experience hallucinations, flashes of lights, dots, and patterns at the age of 10. The first recorded use of her trademark polka dot obsession also occurred at age 10, as Kusama drew a Japanese woman in a kimono covering the entirety of her body in dots. This fixation stays present throughout the artist's work. At age 13, Kusama was sent to work in a military factory sewing parachutes. World War II memories plagued her childhood, as she claimed her adolescence to be consumed with darkness, air raid alerts, and planes overhead. Later, these war memories went on to inspire Kusama's passion for advocacy. In 1948, Yayoi began to study a traditional form of Japanese art called Nahagna at Kiyoti Municipal School of Arts and Crafts. However, she quickly became bored, claiming Japan to be too small, too servile, too feudalistic, and too scornful of women. Inspired by America's abstract impressionism, Kusama moved to the U.S., first residing in Seattle, where she exhibited in the Zoe Dusan Gallery. After a year, Kusama ventured to New York City and quickly gained importance within the avant-garde scene. In the early 1960s, Kusama started her trend of covering normal household objects in white phallic-shaped fabric, highlighting her tensions with sexuality as a whole. This trend utilizes repetition, a theme we find common among Yayoi Kusama. One of her first works in this series, Accumulation No. 1, features an armchair completely covered with enormous phallic-shaped protrusions. This artwork incorporates humor. As Yayoi reveals personal anxiety, making light of the subject. At the same time, Kusama defies oppression by taking ownership of the symbol and presenting it in her own controlled way. Another famous artwork from this series, titled Sex Obsession, Food Obsession, Macaroni Infinity Nets, and Kusama features Yayoi Kusama herself sprawled naked, covered in polka dots, on top of a protrusion-filled couch surrounded by macaroni pieces. Intrigued by this image due to its relativity to this past semester's content, our group decided to dive deeper into the truth behind such an odd picture. Unanimously, we admired Kusama's use of seemingly basic and simplistic elements to create a complex image filled with a variety of meanings. Through her use of phallic-shaped food protrusions in her own body, the artist is able to open important dialogues surrounding sexuality, feminism, and mental health. From first glance, viewers are drawn to the apex of the painting where Kusama placed her exposed vulnerable self. Her face, mostly obscured by dark hair, allows the art to take on an entity outside of just her. Kusama, though she incorporated herself in the work, is rather a symbol of femininity and sexualization of all women. Contrasting with the light background, her body is displayed so forcefully that it cannot be ignored, despite the comfort it may cause. This artistic choice, especially in the 60s, was done to challenge the patriarchal notions of women's sexuality. Kusama recognized women had their natural sexuality oppressed within society and yet were simultaneously objectified by their male counterparts. Kusama felt women were passive prisoners to men, food, and home. The next contrasting detail and archetype of Kusama's work are the presence of infinity nets on her body. 
These dots have both an individual and collective element that adds to the psychedelic nature of her work. These dots symbolize a desire to be unique, simultaneously contradicting itself by promoting homogeneity. By incorporating these elements, not only was she finding a therapeutic outlet for her own illness, Kusama created a surreal environment for her artwork to have the most impact. Being at the forefront of the abstract expressionist movement, she is confronting the normative European male-dominated art world during the 60s. Rather than following strict Japanese art practices or Western formalist aesthetics, she worked to create non Maotinus work to show the world she saw in her own head. It is important to note the material she used throughout the rest of the piece as well. Macaroni is significant in many ways beyond functionality. By incorporation of food in such a uniform manner, Kusama is able to show subtle irony. While her many uses of food may appear comforting or comical, it is more so related to the redundant domestic roles women are forced into. Whether it is with sex, food, or consumerism, women are given roles they are expected to fulfill. Kusama created her art as the best way of communicating with a large number of people. Through her abstract work, she used publicity as a medium to show the freedoms possible when breaking cultural norms. In relation to artistic theories, we believe many of Kusama's work follow predominantly under emotionalism. Through exploitation of cultural identities and understandings, the artist is working to evoke emotions from its viewers. Kusama's famous Mirror Infinity Rooms began in 1963, featuring room-sized repetitive installations incorporating light and music. Since then, she has created 20 different Infinity Rooms. The 2016 room, The Souls of Millions of Light Years Away, features lights flickering and a rhythm allowing only, visit, only one visitor at a time as their body activates and controls the room's movement. This specific piece symbolizes life and death, fleeting time. Yayoi also organized many protests and ordeals through the performance art in public spaces such as Central Park. Often involving nudity, Yayoi believed that the nakedness symbolized peace as these protests often advocated against the Vietnam War. One of her most famous happenings, titled Anatomic Explosion of Wall Street, took place in 1968 outside of the New York Stock Exchange. Naked dancers moved to the sound of bongo drums as Yayoi painted blue dots across their bodies, proclaiming the money made with such stock fueled the ongoing war. The ordeal lasted only 15 minutes before stopped by police. To further her message, Yayoi wrote a letter a letter to President Nixon addressing that you could not eradicate violence by using more violence, ultimately urging Nixon to sh choose peace. Yayoi Kusama very much believed in promotion, viewing opportunities like these protests as a chance to be seen. She endorsed the idea that avant-garde artists need mass communication like traditional artists need paintbrushes. Kusama's Narcissus garden is one illustration of eagerness for publicity. This display is compromised of hundreds of sphered mirrors, creating what she refers to as a kinetic carpet. As the first display was initially set up, Kusama appeared outside of the Italian pavilion, dressed in a gold kimono, and began to sell each sphere until stopped by surrounding organizers. These extravagant outfits were quite common for, for Yayo, as she often wore brightly colored wigs and bold fashion statements, of course covered in polka dots. While in New York, Yayoi experimented with more than just avant-garde. In fact, she supervised a homosexual wedding, launched a gay club called the Kusama Omophile Company, and opened many naked painting studios. New York City also sparked a romance for Yayoi as she engaged in a platonic relationship with Joseph Cornell, consisting of sketches, letters, collages, and consistent phone calls. As Yayoi was 26 years younger than him, this passionate association lasted until his death in 1972. In 1973, Kusama returned to Japan, facing poor health. She shifted her focus to writing intrinsic poetry and stories and immersed herself in art dealing. One of her most famous works from this time is a fiction piece published in 1984 titled The Hustler's Grotto of Christopher Street, which depicts a world consumed by homosexuality and drugs. 
1977, Kusama checked herself into the Siwa Hospital for the Mentally Ill and has personally resided ever since by free will and choice. Despite this, she still has continued to produce art, making her next debut with international art shows in England and New York in 1989. Perhaps one of her most famous recent works is Kusama's symbolism of the pumpkin, claiming it to be her alter ego, as they are known for their charismatic and captivating shape and appeal. She created many pumpkins covered in various patterns of dots, and even went on to incorporate them with infinity rooms. Another one of Kusama's most recent series, Obliteration Rooms, features audience engagement. This work originates as a room filled with simple sterile white objects, such as living room furniture. Visitors are given stickers of different shapes and sizes created by Kusama herself and asked to place them on any surface of their choosing. As time goes on, the room which utilizes repetition becomes consumed with a pop of colorful dots. Specifically, Kusama utilized these obliteration rooms to defy the just look, don't touch policies of museums, symbolizing her broken childhood and her desire to escape passive environments and free herself from captivity and trauma. Over the years, Yayoi Kusama has gained much recognition and received many awards and honors. Some of the most notable include the Ashi Prize in 2001, the National Achievement Award from the Order of the Rising Sun in 2006, and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Women's Caucus of Art. In 2006, Kusama became the first Japanese female to acquire the Premium Imperial, one of Japan's highest honors. In 2009, Kusama received the Person of Cultural Merit Award, and in 2014, she was ranked in the top most popular artists after her Latin American tour admitted over 8,500 visitors daily. Many retrospective exhibits of Kusama's work have been presented across the world in places such as the Museum of Modern Art, the Whitney Museum, and the Tate Museum. She has even worked with the Hishhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden to make her 2017 Infinity Mirror exhibition accessible to those with disability through virtual reality display. Themes of feminism, sexuality, and psychology are universally present through Yayo's lifetime actions and illustrations. Kusama relies heavily on art as a form of therapy to heal pain. She has famously declared, if it were not for art, I would have killed myself a long time ago. This use of art as a coping mechanism is a common one we've seen throughout the semester, as with artist Frida Kahlo. As Yayoi Kusama continues to make her art in her ninth decade of life, she has declared she hopes to be 100 years old, still facing the challenge of what to create next. To quote one of the most influential, important, living female artists to this day, Kusama insists, I have a lot left inside. I believe my art will last 500 years, 1,000 years, and forever. For me, art is everything. I will strive to create works of art until I die, in the hope that my work will continue to touch the hearts of people even after I have died.